So first of all, I'd like to congratulate the co-organizers of this amazing conference, Nancy and Kim. Um, it looks like an incredible event. I wish I could have been here for the whole thing, but I was banging out the end of my 50-page paper. But by all accounts, um, you're talking about technology, you're talking about solutions, you're talking about the challenges, and you've got some great international speakers and some homegrown talent too. My office is also proud to be a, a supporter of the conference. The lights are really bright here, but I'm looking out. And by show of hands, how many of you are visiting from outside of British Columbia? Wow. That's most everyone. I should have asked who's from British Columbia. How many are here from outside of Canada? That's fantastic. I don't think there's anyone here from my hometown of Victoria. Anyone? Well, I'm a proud British Columbian, so I want to take a moment to recognize the bench strength that we have here in British Columbia on the health research front. From pioneering breakthroughs in HIV AIDS to innovations in the use of analytics and, and big data to personalized medicine and, and genome work to organizations like Pop Data BC that serve as a model for privacy and security sensitive research. BC is leading the way on many fronts and is an important contributor to the global dialogue on the future of health and social policy research. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Dr. Clyde Hertzman while his contributions to this research community are very well known, this biannual conference is also an important part of his legacy. Clyde was a champion for this conference. He saw it as an opportunity to convene a conversation about the future of health research. And that conversation, in my view, is extremely timely because we're at a critical juncture here on the health data front, both locally and globally. The exponential growth of information and communication systems, of new technologies, has increased the availability, the mobility, and the value of data. And the currency of personal information including personal health information, has put increased pressure on policymakers, on researchers to utilize the data for innovation and for better outcomes. And as data becomes more mobile, as it's stored in exponentially larger amounts, as it flows between organizations and across borders, there are increased challenges and complexities for data stewards, for researchers, for policy makers, and also increased risks for data spills and accidents. And these data breaches can have ruinous effects for data stewards, data controllers, as well as the individuals affected by these breaches. And in our conversations and in the work that you do, we must never forget that the data driving research is never just data. It's sensitive health information provided by individuals in the context of care and in good faith. And if privacy and data security are not respected when health information is shared and linked, Patients and the general public will lose trust and confidence in the providers. They may be alienated from participating in research. They may be alienated from participating in the system as a whole. 
which is why it's in our collective interest to ensure that proper controls are in place, to protect the data, and to build the public trust. And when I'm out there, what I'm hearing from British Columbians is that they tentatively support the idea of linking and combining personal health information to improve the health system so that they can get better care. But these same people expect transparency, they expect that somebody has their back, and they expect strict controls. They need to have faith in the system and they need to have trust in your methods before they're ready to give over their data. I know most of you are from outside BC, so I may have to tell you a story, but 2013 was both a good year and a not so good year for health research in this province. A data breach at the Ministry of Health. Is there anyone here from the Ministry of Health? Okay, that table in the corner, I'm gonna be talking about you. A data breach at the Ministry of Health affected 4.5 million people, and that was a low point. In terms of sheer numbers, that was the largest data breach that our office had ever investigated. And our team took a detailed look at the privacy and security controls at the Ministry of Health in the context of research and more broadly than that. And we made important recommendations for, to address some of the deficits, all of which, all of my recommendations have been accepted by the Ministry of Health and they've moved forward on the implementation. It's going to take some time. But 2013 also saw some high points, like when the broader health research community got together not once, but twice, to talk about how we can facilitate faster and more efficient access to data for health research. And everybody was in the room, public policy makers, bureaucrats, data custodians, privacy experts, researchers, university administrators, the place was crowded. Some of that dialogue was prompted by the data breaches at the ministry, but it was also motivated by the ongoing tensions and frustrations bubbling along below the surface on the part of researchers, on, on, on the part of data stewards, universities, and public servants. So with my office serving as a convener, we created a neutral place to start to have conversations, to acknowledge the tensions, but also to focus on the desired outcomes and the shared interests. And we discovered that there were a whole lot of issues that were getting in the way and affecting efficient access to data for research. Everything from opaque data request processes to a lack of resources. For data stewards, a lack of clarity about what data is even available, slow response times, and a big one for me, a lack of focus and a lack of direction policy direction for data stewards. Nobody was saying you got to get some of this stuff out in a timely way. And I think that's changing in BC. At the second round table in particular, we all saw the need for a comprehensive and cross-sector governance framework for clarity and for understanding not only of the data access process, but also the roles and responsibilities and accountabilities for using health data for public interest research. And we also identified the need for a long-term solution to timely access the data. So a secure, hopefully one-stop, privacy protective research platform, that was a very high priority for that group and you'll see some of that reflected in my report. As commissioner, I strongly believe that we can facilitate 
access to data for research and protect privacy at the same time. It's a false dichotomy to say otherwise. We don't have to choose. Privacy laws are not a barrier to this important work. And I'm also confident that through ongoing discussion, ongoing collaboration, we can collectively improve timely and appropriate access to data in BC. So this morning, as soon as I finish speaking and press send, um, my office will publish a special report making the case for a comprehensive health information law for British Columbia, consistent rules for both the public and the private sector. As Nancy said, um, giving away my line, the report is called A Prescription for Legislative Reform. It's a forward-looking report that surveys what are the pressures, what are the technologies, what are the changes in service delivery, and also what are the opportunities that create an imperative for legislative reform. How can BC best position itself to take advantage of the opportunities that the innovations pre present, but also face the very real challenges involving notification, involving transparency, and controlled use of personal health information in areas like big data, precision medicine, genomics, and we all know that big data analytics is a game changer in this space. So BC has an opportunity to be a leader, to embrace the, the innovations and the technologies while ensuring that we have comprehensive, independent oversight of the system to protect patient data. So what we need now is a strong law, a clear law, with independent oversight that gives us the flexibility to address patient expectations, to address personalized medicine, the changing service delivery, while still protecting privacy. And the report is written to really inform the public discussion. So whether you work for a health authority, whether you're in the research community, whether you're a privacy expert, you have important expertise and perspectives about health data, and we want to hear from you. So write to me, tweet to me, um, phone me, phone me, that works too, and let me, let me know what you think. So in closing, I just wanted to say that while at times I think these challenges that you're talking about at this conference seem really, really big, I think what you're proving is the world is really quite small. And the issues that we face here in BC are the same ones that you are grappling with in your communities. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm gonna hang around a bit. Maybe the media will mob me with questions about my 50-page report on legislative reform. We'll see. Um, but I'd, I'd love to continue the dialogue. So enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you very much.